This is a short story about how to uh, use the system clock, basis two board, basis two board. Uh, the system clock on basis boards is often 25 megahertz. Um, and I'm going to use counters to slow that down to something that I can see with an LED. So one hertz, two hertz, I can see those. That's one cycle per second. So, uh, two high lows per second. Um, so I'm going to slow those down with the counter. So the uh, overall approach um, using Verilog is to make two modules. I guess I could just make one module and call it a different argument. So I'm going to make two modules. One of them is going to make a clock at one hertz, and another one is going to make a clock at two hertz. So the inputs are the system clock for each module, and the outputs are these slowed down clocks. And the overall module, so this counter module, that's the glue that you know brings all the machines together. I'm going to use um, the system clock from pin B8 on the board. And my outputs are going to be two LEDs, G1 and B1. So the general approach that I'm using is that I've got a module that's going to make a one hertz clock. It's going to take system clock in, it's going to leave clock out. Remember, these names don't have to line up. Um, and then I'm just going to have, remember, this system clock is just high, low, high, low, right? It's just ones and zeros. So I need to record those to map out time. Now. Um, you probably remember that 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 to the 2 is 4. Well, 2 to the 25 is about 33 million. And if I need to count up to 25 million cycles, right, that's 25 megahertz, uh, 25 bits is enough, and 24 bits is not enough. So I need a register that's 25 bits wide. It's going to be a counter. It's 25 bits wide. 0 to 24 is 25 bits. Uh, I'll initialize it to 0. And then, so when the clock rises, so always at the positive edge of the system clock. So when the clock rises, I want to, number one, uh, I want to add one to my counter and this is like an equal sign but it's an assignment statement um, so unlike the previous designs where we were dealing with wires in this design we're dealing with uh, memory locations actual latches and so we have to use this different assignment statement and then if the counter is now um, all the way up to 25 million cycles, then I'm going to zero it out and I'm going to bring the clock to low. And if the, um, the counter is at 12.5 million, so 12.5 million halfway through, I'm going to bring the clock high. That's it. That's it. So um, there you go. Uh, there are other ways to do this design, um, but uh, but this is what I'm doing. Um, you could make an argument that maybe this my counter thing should go um, inside of these two. There might be some sequential logic that I'm running into in terms of problems. So then the module's over. The two hertz clock is almost the same story. Except um, I'm only counting up 12 to 5, 12.5 million. So I probably only need 24 bits, probably. So this could be maybe 23 zero, my counter equals zero. Um, and then it's the same story. Uh, halfway through, I, um, I set the clock to high, but uh, initially the clock. Um, low. And so I guess, again, if you're picky, the first clock cycle, I'm not sure what the clock out would be, but the first clock cycle is going to be one second by hand. You know, how many seconds are going to watch it? So at any rate, I will compile this and upload it and show it to you in a minute. Here's the output. Notice it doesn't look right. 
So in the last video, you saw that the um, uh, flashing was a little bit goofy. It, uh, it seemed like it was at double time. And that's because in my initial design, I didn't pay attention to the clock, um, which you can select. So if you solder three pins onto these three holes and then jumper, uh, you know, the left two together, you get 25 megahertz, which is what I thought I had. If you jumper the two right ones together, you get 100 megahertz which is certainly not what I want. With them unjumpered, it's 50 megahertz. And so my code is about half as fast as it should be. So the way to fix that is right here. I mean, I could solder, um, or I could just change the code. So now I'm planning for a 50 megahertz clock on B8, still using pin B8. And, um, and so my counter, let's see, 50 megahertz, so that's going to be 50 cycles per second. I'm going to have to count up to 50 million. So 2 to the 26 is 67 million. That's big enough. So I need it to be a 26-bit wide counter. So 25 to 0 is 26 bits. And then the story is basically the same as before. Uh, so when my counter is equal to 1 less than 50 million, uh, set the counter to 0, set the clock to 0. If my counter is equal to halfway up, set the clock to one. And every time you do this, tick the counter. So I've been thinking about it. I think you miss the middle by one cycle uh, because it could be that the counter ticks before the logic is engaged. And it could be that the logic is engaged before the counter ticks. So I think you could make an argument that this is this code is instable by one uh, clock cycle. So one. 50 millionth of a second. And, and if we're and if that matters, that matters. So then the two hertz clock is the same story. Uh, so we need to count up to 25 million cycles because then we'll get uh, 25 million twice per second. So we get two cycles per second. And the clock going high happens at 12 and a half million. Notice uh, this isn't like programming Yes, the middle, because every time the clock rises, this logic will be executed. All right, that's it. So I'll show you the uh, output from this updated thing in a second. Here's the updated design. Notice it looks a little bit more like one hertz and two hertz now.